Let's now look at the relationship between volume and temperature, also known as Charles' Law. The relationship between volume and temperature will give us a constant. In other words, as temperature increases, volume will increase, and as temperature decreases, volume will decrease. The relationship that you saw in Regents Chemistry was V1 T1 is equal to V2 T2. So we are going to look at this FET simulation to see how these two variables work together. So we're going to start off by adding some gas molecules to this chamber. And we will wait for our pressure to become constant. So we're going to watch the little pressure gauge. We see that it comes constant, And then we're going to go over to the constant parameter and make sure that pressure remains constant. Once pressure is constant, we're going to add some heat to the chamber. Now I'm not controlling the little guy. So as temperature increases, volume increases. So at 852K, there's a lot of volume for the gas. If I lower the temperature by adding some ice, we'll see sooner or later our little guy begin to walk forward. And again, I'm not controlling him. So as temperature decreases, the volume of the gas will also decrease. This shows the direct relationship between the volume and temperature making a constant. Now let's look at an example of a Charles Law problem. But before we do that, we should go to page three of your notes and notice a couple of key things. Important things to remember. Make sure that temperature is always reported in Kelvin, never Celsius. You must always convert to Kelvin. Be consistent with your volume units. If you start with liters, then stay with liters. If you start with milliliters, then stay with milliliters. So let's look at our example. A gas has a volume of 173 milliliters at a temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is reduced to zero degrees Celsius and the pressure remains constant, what will be the new volume of the gas? The first thing that I want to do here before I write out my formula is convert my temperatures from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So I'm going to write 78 degrees Celsius and I'm going to add 273. And if I add those two together, I get 351 Kelvin. If I have zero degrees Celsius and I add 273 to that, I get 273 Kelvin. Because I know that I must convert all of my temperatures from degrees Celsius to Kelvin before I can begin. The next step is to write my formula. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. My V1 for this situation is 173 milliliters. So 173 milliliters divided by 78 degrees Celsius, which we know is now 351 Kelvin. That's equal to my V2, which is what I'm solving for, divided by zero degrees Celsius, which we now know is 273 Kelvin. If I cross multiply and solve for V2 to the correct number of significant figures, I see that my new volume is 135 milliliters. Now the question is, does this make sense? My temperature went from 351 Kelvin and decreased to 273 Kelvin. In the same respect, my volume should also decrease. So I started at a volume of 173 milliliters. That means my volume should be smaller and I find for V2 that my volume is smaller at 135 milliliters. This is one example of a Charles Law problem. Again, the most important thing that you have to do is make sure that you convert your degrees Celsius into Kelvin.